welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach, and we are currently looking at Founder Shores. This is one of the very first neighborhoods developed in all of Verde Beach. If you go back to episode one, that's when it was founded. And today we are going to redevelop this. Now, this is a neighborhood that being an older neighborhood, I would fully expect it to have changed over time. But that's the thing about city skylines, you end up trapped in a time period. So we're gonna redevelop this, but I wanna do things differently. I'm gonna create a Swiss cheese district. We're gonna punch holes in this district and preserve some of the most interesting buildings in this neighborhood. That's how this would happen. There would be an uproar if the whole neighborhood were just redeveloped and there would be holdouts like this person right here. I, I assume that I mean, that's a pretty nice house and it's very close to the water in a very valuable old neighborhood that's very walkable. There's no way they're redeveloping their house. They're just not gonna happen. So we're gonna take care of that. We're gonna add a number of new assets into this area and make this a really special place using some of our wall-to-wall -wall buildings in combination with some of our green cities buildings. Make this one of the most unique neighborhoods in the entire city. It's 20 blocks approximately that we're gonna be re redeveloping and it's gonna be absolutely spectacular. But before we get to that, I feel like we have to address some of the changes from the previous episode. There were a number of things that you guys had problems with in this area, and I've addressed every single one of them. I've gone through the comments, and I think I've come up with a number of solutions that you are going to be very happy with. And through the power of editing, we're gonna to go to that right now. Oh, that is so much better. Now let's walk through some of the changes, because there are a number of them, and I think you're gonna like almost all of them. So the very first one is I've reversed the roads here. They're now going in the right direction. That was something that was brought up a number of times in the comments, and that was a good one. I appreciate that. Next is something that surprised me. So the blue stone was honestly the number one comment. I saw it repeatedly. Even though it was the top comment, it came up in the second comment, in the third comment, and it made me really curious. How do these look? And you know what? They look really good. <laughs> So I was wrong and I appreciate, this is where the hive mind of the internet comes together and we make the correct decision together. So I can't take credit for this because I was against the blue stone and I was wrong. It looks absolutely spectacular. Then I straightened out these roads a bit so that we could have our dorms lining up in a way that made sense. I brought our veterinarian college back. Now there were a couple of comments that pointed this out that the reason this building was here in the first place was the proximity to the zoo. And by relocating it across Keller House, which was not the height of realism, I actually defeated the purpose of the university. And that was not my intention. So I am happy to bring this back and place this right here. So I think that this looks a ton better now with this straightened out a little bit. We had some jogs in there and it looked you know, interesting from above, but from a functionality standpoint, you know, we're, we don't want students to feel like they have to cross the road arbitrarily. There were some comments about this street crossing here and not liking it, comparing it to Chicago. And, uh, you know, I'm okay with it. I think that it's okay to have a couple of at-grade crossings so long as you have the option to go another way, which we do have. And now over here is where we see the next set of significant changes. So first of all, we had this for you four lane road with bus lanes going across the uh, going across Keller House before. And I have changed this for one specific reason. There was a comment saying that there was no way to park at this exhibit right here, which is the Panda Sanctuary. There was no way to park here. So I thought it might be interesting to actually provide a bit of access from inside of Fireside Commons. So what we're seeing now is you could drive in, get to the Panda Sanctuary, and then transition over to one of these pedestrian roads to get into the university, which to me, makes just an absolute ton of sense. We brought back this outdoor study right here. And the one thing I'm noticing is we actually do not have a university commencement building. So we're gonna need to add that likely over here, which to me makes perfect sense. So let's add that right now. Now, one of the reasons I say this makes perfect sense to me is that if, for whatever reason, you couldn't have an outside graduation, you could potentially go into the basketball arena and have a graduation there. So there's some synergy between those uses, and I, lo I love it. I love that. 
We're gonna also expand this area where we have an opportunity. So why don't we take advantage of that right now? We're gonna expand this out a bit. And we're gonna bring our office back. Now we have a district here that covers a pretty significant area. I think what we're gonna do is grab our pedestrian district, pull this up, cover this area. And then one of the comments in the previous video said, well, why don't you just make the office wall to wall? And you know, that's a great idea. For whatever reason, that didn't really cross my mind as an option. And I think it's just getting used to all of these new options that we have available to us. So here we go. We're going to take this. We're going to add our office wall to wall just to the Madison pedestrian area, which I didn't see a lot of comments about what, what to name this. And the few comments I did see said, keep it as it is. So I might keep this the Madison pedestrian area, but again, always up for name suggestions. So if you have ideas, please go for it. Now, obviously this is going to change. I'm just going to get rid of this. Height of realism, just demolishing a building that's under construction. But I think it's, I think it's a, a good situation for us. Now, a bad situation for us is all of these garbage icons. So the game doesn't like what I'm doing. Let's just be blunt about this. The game was not designed to allow a campus to have pedestrian roads. And I know that people were asking, why did I do this? Like this was a campus already. It was pedestrian oriented. You didn't need to change this, Phil, but it, I did. Here's the thing. The Goodall Institute burned down more than almost anything else in the city. The only thing that burned down, I think more than the Goodall Institute is burning palms. So something had to be done, but rather than plowing roads through a campus, which to me is blasphemous, I wanted to be able to create a pedestrian environment that could be served by fire trucks. Now this environment can be served by fire trucks. And that's a huge benefit. That to me makes sense. Truthfully, when we put paths through, like these, this path I put right here, this path should allow fire trucks. Just if, if we're looking at reality, that's what a path like this allows. You'd, you'd construct it to allow fire trucks to access this along with water utility vehicles or there's a main break, they'd be able to drive down here, heavy vehicles. Now you'd block them off most of the time. You'd allow it when it's necessary. You'd allow ambulances. That's the only way this would function. And the campus DLC allows you to place buildings on these roads. Now, the interesting thing about the campus DLC is it doesn't yell at you when you place buildings on one of these roads and uh, paths, not roads, and you don't have direct garbage access. It allows garbage to, I think, teleport. Because I don't know how garbage is removed from these buildings otherwise. So maybe there's this historic garbage teleportation. And now that I have added these lovely pedestrian facilities through here, I've thrown off this DLC. Now, I think that we're gonna see some mods coming soon. And if not, I'm encouraging <laughs> these mods. I'd love to see a mod that allows garbage trucks on these pedestrian roads. To me, this is an absolutely arbitrary limitation to force you to use the service points, which I'd be fine with if I could place a service point within a campus district. That could be the other mod, allow me to place a service point wherever I want. Without that change, there's this conflict and it feels like a big oversight. And it's something I'd love to see change. The other thing, obviously we're looking at one right now, there's a monorail right here, there are trams. I, I think that there's just enough outcry to have those facilities and bikes, bikes, also bikes on these pedestrian roads that I just, I think that that's gonna come. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And truthfully, if there is a solution to this garbage problem, which if we take a look, pop in at, and look at our garbage, this is unacceptable. And I will add that mod to this, to this build because I feel like this is kind of an oversight. There are very few mods that I'll just say, they just, I'll add it to what is supposed to be a vanilla build, but this is one. Uh, and that, that's one that I would, honestly, uh, it adds so much to the DLC that I just, uh, I, I feel like y you just need it. Or I hope it gets patched in the future. So I have no advanced knowledge in anything, just uh, me opining a bit about that. <laughs> so there we go. That is what we've done. We have made a lot of changes over here, and for the most part, I'm happy with them. And I really like what we've just done over here as well. 
the wall to wall buildings, which is a good preview about what we're going to do today is we're going to add lots and lots of wall to wall buildings. We're going to do so in a very controlled and thoughtful way. So the very first thing, Founder Shores, 20 blocks, basically goes up here. And then we have the Summit District, and we're going to change that. And I, we're going to use this as an opportunity to also develop along the shore. So this is something that I think would have happened a million years ago. And uh, there's a few things I want to look at because things are going to change rapidly in this area. First of all, our land value. This is uh, one of the most valuable pieces of property in the city. It's $79 per square meter. So let's check that out. Functionally, what that looks like, it's just valuable. Every, every, every square inch of this land, every square meter, every square centimeter, millimeter, however you want to measure it, it's just super valuable. So there, the development pressure here would be immense. And when you take a look at this, we've got moderate density here, moderate density here, and then a whole bunch of single family homes next to the very first park and within close proximity to downtown and in between two universities. There's no way that this would have remained a low density district. But I believe, I fully believe that certain homes through here would not redevelop. There'd be holdouts. And then by the time that there is enough pressure or a willing seller to redevelop these areas, it just wouldn't happen because of historic preservationists and bluntly NIMBYs. Now, this is one of the situations where maybe I get on board with the NIMBYs and I go, all right, yeah, we don't want to get rid of every historic building we have in the city. Granted, I don't think that we're going to redevelop over here in the Verde Beach Historical District, considering it's a historical district. So you've got to be able to redevelop somewhere, but I could see preserving some buildings in this area. So what we're going to do is look for some of the most beautiful, maybe buildings and preserve them. A lot of these Mediterranean style, uh, you know, completely maxed out, leveled out homes, I think would be preserved. And then you got this, which is kind of an abomination <laughs> in my opinion. It's kind of a mixture between brutalism and green cities architecture. I don't know what to call this. I don't like it. So this is the kind of thing I don't want to preserve. They might wonder, how do I preserve just a couple of houses? And you, you think, all right, I'll make it historical. Will that work? Well, no, <laughs> it will not. It will not. We're going to make a bunch of these historical anyway, just in case, but it's not going to do the trick for us. So let's go ahead. Well, we're going to add a whole bunch of historical des designations. And I want to look a little closer. Yeah, no, that's terrible. <laughs> we're not saving that. What we do need to save, though, are some of our historical bookstores. You might recall the bookstore across the street from a bookstore. That gets saved. <laughs> that is a piece of Verde Beach history. This is a really special part of the city, in, in my opinion. If I were to live in Verde Beach, this is the kind of neighborhood I want to live in. But we're going to turn it even more into the kind of neighborhood I like to live in. And that is one where you could live in any kind of housing that you want. You could live in an apartment. You could live in a, in a condo. You could live in a single family home. You could live in a, a, a mid-rise tower. You have options and you might choose each of those options at different points in your life. That to me is the right kind of neighborhood, the kind of neighborhood that provides a number of options for folks. So let's look at this. And what we're doing is I eliminated that neighborhood that was over here. I, I liked it, but I don't know exactly why that designation was there. And I looked at that before loading in and it's just not that I, I couldn't find a reason for that to exist. We're going to swish cheese this. So we just pop some holes in here, preserve some of these, these homes. And basically anything that I applied a historic designation to in, in before, I'm bringing in here. I'm also going to pull down to Fisherman's Bend. Fisherman's Bend is going to disappear. There's no way that I can preserve it. And the main reason for that is that we're going to add a pedestrian district over here uh, to, to, to preserve some of, uh, basically so that we can have a service point in here, not as the primary option. We're going to pedestrianize a couple of things, but reasonably, I just want to back up a kind of a fallback option in this area. So there we go. Now I'm going to preserve the bookstores as well. 
I think I might do something a little different. We're going to come through here and eliminate this. I'm gonna need a neighborhood name because this is going to be a new neighborhood. I'm wondering what it gives us. Let's see. Sunset District, that's not good enough. <laughs> we, we can't do that. So the reason I'm carving this out is I want a small district of green cities style buildings. I feel like they provide a nice transition between the vanilla buildings and these new, you know, honestly, pretty eclectic looking buildings. I like the way these new buildings look. I do think they're overwhelming if you overdo it. And I've seen, I've been watching videos of other creators, you know, using these and even Tutoria. And what I created to demonstrate the DLC, I would not want to do that. It's a little much in my opinion. So we're going to try to avoid that level of invasiveness with these buildings because they are an acquired taste. And I think that in small doses, they look absolutely amazing. In large doses, they look, they look out of place a little bit. So don't want to overdo it. All right. So now you've seen that I've, I've swished cheese this a little bit, and I think the result is going to be pretty great, truthfully. Not that I think that these are excellent buildings. Let's just preserve a little bit more of our history. <laughs> there we go. Just lose it. Just lost it right there. Okay, so the end result of this is little holes in our district, and you're going to see why this is so important. So we're going to go through, and I'm going to go into our specializations. We're going to add in our commercial wall to wall here. And I want to add in our office wall to wall. We don't have office yet, but we're going to add some and then residential wall to wall over here. We're going to add our residential self-sufficient buildings. And I think we're going to add in commercial wall to wall over here as that, as that transition. Now, some of this is going to change. We are, we're gonna do some things. We've got to. We're gonna use some of the new city service buildings and get rid of the smaller buildings that were really fit in here to, to fit with a small town. That small town is gone. An example is this little police station. It's no longer appropriate. Let's clean out our old uses. And in fact, the the very first place I want to start is probably the hospital. So we'll get rid of this old hospital over in Orchard Park and this hospital over here. This would be a project that I could absolutely see happening where a, a redevelopment opportunity occurs. Now, the very first thing I'm gonna do is just click on the hospital to get a feel for where this might fit in. So if I were to add this, I end up with two tiles on the outside and I need to cut into a road. So if I have to relinquish a road anyway, I think I want to be able to place parking, which I know is probably a controversial take there, but I, I just think it's important. So. Let's look at our uses now that we've done this. Lots of historic properties here. That's not going to work well for us. Right here might work. So what we're going to do is clear out this road and this road. And I may have just lost this. Hopefully I didn't. And we're going to add one of our new hospitals here. We've got an interesting situation here. I've added this hospital and I wanted to add some parking near it. I'd love to add the parking right here, but we've got our historic buildings. So we're stuck. We could have added more right here, but we're not going to be able to do that either. So I'm going to eliminate this building. We're going to get rid of this and add in another outlet and rely on some street parking, which is not ideal for a hospital, but it happens. And then we've got this awkward space right here. And what I think I want to do is add in one of these larger plazas that we have from our new DLC. So I could see a, a number of ways to go with this. I want something that's deeper. And if we're going deeper, that's way too big. We'll go with this. This is the statue plaza. That one should fit us really nicely. We get kind of a gap back here, but we can fill that in with some flowers and some landscaping. At the very end, we will handle some of that. So you see that we've been able to swish cheese some of this stuff in here. And I'm gonna even start mixing in uses. We're gonna respond to our, 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 our meter down here. And when we need a different use, let's just do it. We'll mix it in. 
this will feel like a very mixed use, very diverse neighborhood. And that is awesome. <laughs> just, just awesome. All right, next up, we need to focus on our fire protection and our well, police is probably the easiest. We'll get rid of this right off the bat. So let's do that. And these new police stations, I brought it up in a couple of other videos. These are tiny. Oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> I went to hit a button and instead added an extra police station. <laughs> Not my intention. Let's get this fixed. So now we're in a pretty good place. We need to work in some of our parks. We've got a lot of empty land for a minute. It's gonna change. So this is the kind of thing that as a neighborhood we would redevelop, you would hope to, to get that. In an older neighborhood, a city might have to acquire property to make this a reality. A very tough sell, but I think it's, it's certainly worth it. So we're gonna add some small food truck plazas and ice cream stands throughout here just to give people some options on, 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 on places to get things to eat, <laughs> things of that nature. And we're, we also have this lovely flower plaza. We're gonna add a couple of these in. And then we have things like this fountain plaza that if we want to add it, we really need to pick our spots because it's going to take out a path. I'm okay with that. And I'm, I'm gonna add in a couple of these as well. And by a couple, I mean one. <laughs> so there we go. And then finally, we need to add in our fire department. So we've got these new fire departments. Actually, not finally, we've got elementary schools and high schools as well. So let's add in our fire department. And I've been eyeballing a location for this. I think right here makes a ton of sense. We're only taking out one building and a path. Now the unfortunate thing is the terrain, we're not respecting our topography here. So we're gonna hide our problems, <laughs> which is something that some people do. They hide their problems. And that's what I'm gonna do today. So I wanna use these tall grasses to hide our problems. That was another comment that I saw in the previous video that I agree with. I fall back on the weeds, as some people call them, uh, as my ultimate hider. <laughs> and they work well, they do. They work really well. And I like them because of that but I, I need to get a bit more diverse in my selections. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna try some new things and step outside of our comfort zone. Sometimes that's how you get better. In fact, I, I fully attribute that to how I've gotten better at the game. Find something that you're not good at and just, just say, that that's what I'm gonna work on. You'll see that in a pattern in my videos. It, sometimes I will find something that I just really wanna get better at. And across all my videos, I'll work on it. <laughs> so it's just um, my way of getting better at something. It's it's a lot of fun, truthfully. All right. So through here, in these 20 blocks, we're also going to need to upgrade the paths through here and get rid of some of the old landscaping. But first, the schools. So we now have these high-capacity elementary schools. We don't have a huge need for this. But if you look at this neighborhood, <laughs> there's kind of a huge need here. So let's look for a location where we're not gonna demolish a bunch of stuff. Now, truthfully, this locate these locations would have likely been reserved up front. We're also gonna get rid of our old stuff. So we've got a high school here. We no longer need that. I don't think that this, yeah, that's not gonna fit there, which is totally fine. We're gonna need to use a bit of eminent domain here and likely get rid of a path. Now that is a historic building. This is not, so we'll get rid of that which opens up the opportunity for a little bit more residential, not a bad thing either. So these are some really cool looking assets. They're gonna fit well in here. And I love how mid risey these are. It's just, you know, it's a great transition between some of this higher density stuff. It's what the game was always missing. Now I know that there have been people who commented, I wish I could get rid of all these procedurally generated uh, murals and things of that nature. And I, I get it. I, it would be nice to have the option, but I'm not gonna bemoan it too much because I've just been really desperately wanting these missing middle housing options, missing middle buildings, generally mid-rise buildings. Uh, and to have them, to me, though I know there've been a lot of people who said, I don't know that I like the way that this DLC works. I like 
some things about it a lot. And this is one of those things that I just really, really like. Okay, so now with this, I think we have most everything that we could add outside of a university. We're not gonna add that. That doesn't make sense here. That would cannibalize our existing universities and that wouldn't be good. Let's go through and add in some spot commercial, particularly in this area where we've taken some away. Taken some, they've taken the university or the, the college away rather. And now I want to think a bit about our service points in the pedestrian area. So that might not be obvious right now. Nothing, nothing going on here. Just a bunch of, bunch of density added to this area. And let's take a look at what it's done to our values. We're up to 87, which I believe is on par with our most expensive districts. So if we look 92 over in the Lewis Garden City, and I believe it was King Hills over here, 91, 96 in Foggy Square. Yeah, so Foggy Square is probably that place. I think we could get higher than that. And then the pedestrian district, uh, lots of comments I've seen about this too, folks saying it, it, it's so, it has such a profound impact on value. And I haven't really focused on it, if I'm being completely honest with you. So I'm going to focus on it immensely right now. <laughs> so <laughs> let's do this. We're going to pop into our parks and go over to our pedestrian areas, actually, sorry, our pedestrian areas, yes, and pop in a city, a small pedestrian service point. Maybe actually we'll go with the large, just knowing what we're doing here. We'll see how big it is. We're gonna be taking out some buildings, probably ones that we just placed. We'll get rid of the rest of that path right there. <laughs> so the height of realism, just uh, get rid of some buildings that are brand new. I'm gonna get rid of these trees too, because we're gonna add some new stuff in. We're already over here. And let's increase the size of this district. Myrtle Center. <laughs> this is going to be cursed. All right, let's go ahead and add this. Fisherman's Bend, you're gone. I'm sorry. Look at that. We already have values going up. And then I'm going to do one more thing. That maybe you're not going to love. We're going to do it. So Myrtle Center will also cover this area. I want this large pedestrian service point to, to really cover as much as possible. I don't want to have to put more unless I have to. So this, I want to see the focus area. There is no focus area. Interesting. So let's add in a couple of things. So the reason I wanted this, this, this large pedestrian area is we're going to convert two roads. And I know that probably seems pretty modest but I think it makes good sense. So we've got this road right here, which has transit. And then we've got this road along the coast, which isn't really needed from a transportation standpoint. There are some conflicts. We've got trams right here, so we can't convert that. But let's go ahead and work on converting a couple of these things. So first of all, the transit street. This will now be a transit way. And that's a really exciting change in my mind. That would really transform the way that this area functions and feels. And it would be a very positive change. I'm seeing a couple of things. We're gonna call a mulligan <laughs> on something over here. So I did not, two things. Number one, I want wall-to-wall -wall office in this area. And number two, I want to make sure that we have high density. This is the Green Cities DLC right here, which does have a difference differentiation between high density and low density. Now this new DLC with uh, plazas and promenades, mid rises everything. So it doesn't matter if you have it zoned for low density or high density, you get the same buildings. So I, I fell into a trap there and look at this. Now we get some tall buildings and that transition is what I'm looking for. Look at these look really nice next to each other. We've got what, how many, how many stories is this? A 13 story building next to a five. Totally logical. Another five story building here, but with taller floors. I like this, this this feels good to me. That transition between these feels good. Then the peppering in of a couple of single family holdouts. Some historic homes. Some of the founders homes in Founder Shores makes a ton of sense to me. All right, 
So now we've got this little area along the coast and I would love to just take this pedestrian district and apply a theme, but that would get rid of all of our historic homes. So we've gotta be really thoughtful about what we're doing. And to be thoughtful, we're gonna add another district. So we need another name for another district. And this is just a regular old district. But I'm doing this because I, Hamilton Heights, I actually like that, that's a good name. So I'm doing this because I want there to this to be a wall-to-wall -wall district. So commercial wall-to-wall, -wall, office wall-to-wall, -wall, and residential wall-to-wall. -wall. So now we're gonna zone in here and we're gonna just mix it up. So mostly residential, I think. just because we can't do vertical mixed use. So that would be one story of, uh, you know, commercial with three stories or four stories of residential above. Doesn't mean that we can't do horizontal mixed use, having these mixed use buildings side by side. So that's what we're doing. And I think it's gonna feel pretty good. We gotta do more over here and there's flooding. Ah, ah, <laughs> just, we're gonna have to do something about that sometime in the future. I've been avoiding this for a long time, but we'll we'll have to address that for the time being we're going to pretend it's not happening put our heads in the sand and uh act like it's re-election time and all we care about is making it out of the next little while <laughs> we don't we don't want to worry about long-term resolutions that sounds like a lot of work so now we are going to pedestrianize this area a bit and you can't up you cannot upgrade normal bridges into pedestrian bridges it just doesn't work so you have to rebuild it. That said, we're gonna go lower and then we'll start to upgrade these streets. And I'm gonna go with the sandstone here because I really do like it. And we're gonna stop here. The main reason is Fisherman's Bend. They need to be able to leave here. And if we do too much, we're gonna create problems. And let's add some trees along here, not build on water. <laughs> you can see the problem already. And then let's come down here with some palm trees. Then the other thing I'd like to do is that I want to pop into our parks menu and add in just, just a couple of tourism assets. So I think a pier right about here would be great. And I know it's not working right now. We've got a solution and that is to use our pedestrian roads and just angle. We'll be able to make a connection there. And look at that, takes care of it. They're happy now, at least for the time being, until of course they tell me how dare you place this on a pedestrian road and they don't pick up garbage. <laughs> we'll have to see if that is the outcome because it's certainly the outcome in the university. So we'll have to see. But for the time being, that is good. Let's get some landscaping behind these buildings once they all fill in. We'll do that at the very end. We'll add in a bunch of landscaping. And look at this. This to me, that feels a ton better. Looks a lot better than the buildings that we had here before. I love that. I love it. It feels like a redevelopment uh, area where a significant amount of redevelopment has occurred and it has left us with this really hip and happening place. I love that. I love that so much. All right, so we've upgraded this. Let's take a look at our transit route. And, oh, what has it done? <laughs> I don't know what this is. We're going to need to adjust this. I feel like it's messing with me. <laughs> Why would this happen? So it wants to get off this pedestrian road. What is the speed limit of the pedestrian road? This is 20. And this road, 40. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we've got a pedestrian. we got Myrtle Center. What if we slow down driving? I don't exactly know what that does for us. Speed this up and see if it changes it. It has changed exactly nothing. <laughs> so that is very disappointing. So we're going to do something that is, it happens. It's a transit mall. So let's just have a stop on every single block. So it would serve that local tra traffic as well. Very inconvenient for anyone going through. And this is a long route. I think it's connecting up the two transfer points. So yeah, we got one right here 
and it goes all the way over to our inner city bus terminal. So it stinks. That said, I do think that you wouldn't necessarily mind it here. You'd pack that time in because this is an important destination for people on both sides and either transfer center. And when you look at the utilization, the number of people we see queuing here, it's worth it. It's worth it. So let's just be okay with this. This is pretty good. All right, so we've got a couple of places that didn't develop in, and it's our, our, it's our fault. There we go. We are gonna fill these areas in. And then I want to go through and upgrade every single path through here. Let's do that right now. We're gonna go with just a park path. We'll do the landscaping on our own. So we had to lose a house for the path. That is not <laughs> the height of realism right there, but we're gonna go with it. We've got a lot of, of, of landscaping through here. It's pretty old school. We're gonna refresh things. These plants would have died a million years ago anyway, so not, I'm not gonna sweat it. And let's go through and just upgrade the rest of these. In fact, we'll find a nice view. Just do them all at once. Okay, much better. I see this though. What is that all about? That must be a lack of a park connection. So let's get that fixed while we're over here. We don't want that to be a thing. There we go. Just had to give it a little bit more uh, a breathing room and it's happy. All right. So now, crime. Crime rate is high. We've got 40 police cars over here. We'll make those random police cars. Sorry, 65 police cars. And we've got criminals chilling at this park over here. Four. Four. All they've got to do is go over one, two, three blocks. I don't get it. I do not get it. Let's look at this as well, though. And we're going to use our large fire trucks here because they're really nice looking vehicles. There we go. Feeling good about this except for this. I really wish I could see that criminal. You know what? Bet it's this guy. Definitely this guy. <laughs> rubbing his head and definitely causing problems and it's Philip with two L's so there we go we know why there's a problem now interestingly I'm seeing that we're we're having issues with this and you can see that there's just a little notch that's allowing these couple of buildings that just kind of stink to look at it is what it is there's not much that we can do about it the districts are so touchy. If I if I get this to work, it's going to break everything. So I guess they'll, this will be a spot where we've got to just accept a few things. Let's go through and improve our landscaping. We've got some landscaping to add by our paths and by our hospital. We'll do that right now. Okay, and we have made some good progress, and I like the changes that we've made here. Now, some of these areas like this one aren't for everybody. This is obviously a residential area, but it's right along the coast, and... Is that seriously? It's a vacuum truck. Those can work on this road, but the garbage trucks can't. <sighs> that is frustrating. I don't, I don't understand why this would be the case, but... It is the case. I'm just going to have to accept it. Serenity now. Serenity now. <laughs> so now I, I do think that we need to think a little bit about how we connect this new district up to our farmer's market. I think that's one of our missing connections. So there's really three options. There's this one right here, uh, which could work. We've got this one right here. That one goes in front of the hospital. So that's kind of a concern. And this one right here that goes in front of 
the fire station, which is also a bit of a concern. But they are pedestrian roads, and they could carry the traffic. So I do think that maybe we just go for the, the road that's right in front of the hospital. It has the most direct connection to the farmer's market. And truthfully, when I was thinking of the farmer's market anyway, I was envisioning it as a pedestrian district. And that's why I think it's so important that we get this converted. So let's go ahead. We're going to convert this road right here, make this a pedestrian road, and we're going to need to expand the district a little bit to extend over here as well. And I'm going to break these. So I'll have to get these fixed as well. Okay, and we're good there. So now we just need to take a look at this district and extend it out. Very good. And we're just gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I, I think I might just extend this out to the farmer's market. Like I mentioned, this is an area that I always imagined being a very walkable place anyway. So I know this makes a really awkward, large pedestrian area, but it's fine. We'll just extend it out. We'll, we'll convert this road. But we need to check, do we have transit here? I, I'm not sure if we do. We look okay, but I, looks like there's a bump out there. Oh, this... I bet you that this is a tourism route. So let's take a look to make sure that it, it that it isn't a tour. Yeah, it, it is. All right, so we'll just pull this stop and move it off a block or so, and that should do the trick for us. There we go. There we go. Just, we'll pull it right over here by the trams, just as good a spot anyway. And now we can convert this. If we wouldn't have done that, it would have broke the route, that would be a problem. And we're going to extend this all the way over to our main drag. So in, in between Semper Verde and the main drag. There we go. Looking good. We're going to go with this larger path too. The idea is that you could pull in your, your uh, if you had a, a vendor's truck, you could pull that right into the sandstone area and really activate this place during a farmer's market. So I like that. I think that this is looking good. And we, we have some garbage issues. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Hopefully that's just like a, a, a temper. There they are again. This this can't be that big of a problem. But I guess it I guess it could be. Let's look. Take a look. Yeah, it's it's a problem. So we might need to check into this soon. We have plenty of capacity, so I don't. Oh, <laughs> this university is going to be the death of me. <laughs> I I wonder if that has anything to do with it. We're gonna need to keep an eye on this. It looks like things are resolving in Founders Square, but man, this is terrible. This is terrible. I guess the whole place could burn down. That could resolve it here. And then maybe that's the only way to do it right now. But over here, at least it seems like it's somewhat resolving. And, you know, I know this is a little ways away from some of our garbage facilities. We're going to try not to think about it. We're going to zoom in and just have a brief city tour. <laughs> a great city tour we have made some absolutely wonderful progress here in my opinion uh, we have a neighborhood that has a great mix of uses it feels really nice and natural and we've preserved some things we've got you know like our, our older founders homes in place we've got some of our older businesses nice mix of density and uses so there is one last thing that we have to check we've got to see what our values look like right now and my guess is they're going to be pretty extraordinary. Let's look. 128 per meter squared. That is wild. <laughs> and the Sunset District just a little bit behind it. What has it done to the other districts near it? Wow, 128. I can't believe that. Uh, 107? 93. 128. 98 holy cow 
So this is the gentrification DLC. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, that was unexpected, exciting, and not, wow, not what I was thinking was going to happen. I think we're going to leave it here. <laughs> Why, what did you guys think of this build? Is this something that, I, I assume that this might be controversial, but you might very well like the outcome. And I think it, it's forced me to think about the way that we zone districts differently. And I like it. I like the, the idea of preserving that one random single family house. I hope that you do as well. Let me know in the comments. And if you liked it, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I really cannot wait to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.